one of the questions we got was, after all these enlightening speeches, please elaborate, how can we strategize to defeat the deceitful Jewish lobby, APAC? And I think the issue of one person, one district, <laughs> one contributor is crucial. Another question we got says, do you see a large difference between the atmosphere in our current Congress toward Israel and the Congress you served in? Do you think that Congress feels differently toward Israel than it did when you were serving? And you could speak in this. I believe the, the scene is much more adverse to good government than it was in my time. I was proud to be a Republican, and I cannot say that today after the behavior of the House of Republicans in regard to the, the treaty with Iran. But the quality of elected representatives is not going to mean much until the Constitution is, is amended to permit strict rules on campaign spending. And when those strict rules come about, we will see a massive change in public interest in voting. Uh, a vast increase, I'm sure, is bound to come about because they see what's going on and they realize that the system is broken, it's not working as it must. Thank you very much. Congressman Mary Hall, yes, do you have a comment but from a Democrat? This well, is, if I could just add to what yeah. Paul said, not disagree with what he said, but you know, the bottom line comes down to the Supreme Court of the United States. The Congress has passed campaign finance reform. We've made many stabs at it. No matter what we do, of course, loopholes are gonna be found, but it comes down to the, Cong or the Supreme Court of the United States. They're the ones that gave us the Citizens sure. United decision. I think during our time there, Nick, a, a bill was passed to put a $40,000 limit on congressional spending. It passed, of course, but the Supreme Court knocked it out right away. And that gets to one of the questions I had, which was the recent Supreme Court decision, uh, what was the role of the Jewish lobby and that gets to another question, whether it's the Jewish lobby or Israeli lobby, it should be the Israeli lobby, by the way. Uh, in the April 2014 Supreme Court decision to strike down political donation caps on. I cannot say what was in the Supreme Court of the United States' mind, but uh, that was one of the questions I had. So, uh, you know, it, it, Yeah, MJ. My hearing is not adequate. I didn't hear what you said. <laughs> Uh, I, I said I thought the bottom line is it's up to the Supreme Court of the United States to limit, and to change our campaign finance laws. They've opened the floodgates like they have. And then they piled on just a couple months ago with a decision lifting the individual caps on contributions. So. MJ, do you have a Yeah, I just wanted to. Uh I'm the Jewish guy on the panel, and I'm, <laughs> and not I'm the woman. <laughs> That's true. Can't fill every slot. <laughs> um, and um, I just want to. Uh, one person wrote, uh, said, um, "What's your uh, reaction to calling APAC the Jewish lobby?" Uh, the correct term, I don't have a particular reaction. I'm not one of these people who say, oh, it's anti Semitic to call it the Jewish lobby. It's a sim it's shorthand. That's the way we talk. The fact is, it is the pro. It's the pro-Israel lobby. Except it's not even really that, because is it really in Israel's interest to have endless war? I mean, it's. But let's just forget names. Speak. I think it's important to know and to recall that the Jewish lobby or the pro-Israel lobby or whatever we call it represents a small minority of Jewish Americans. Every four years, the American Jewish Committee, which is the largest and wealthiest Jewish organization, it's not APAC, it's the American Jewish Committee, does a poll, it's a scientific poll, they do it with the New York Times, um, on exit, as, as it's exit polls when people come from voting, um, what do Jews and others vote? What are the issues that they vote on? The, 
in both 2008 and 2012, the percentage of Jewish voters who vote, who, for whom Israel is in their top five concerns is 4%. 4%. The fact of the matter is, despite what APAC and their paid liars tell us, Jews are, for the most part in this country, what they always were. They're liberals, they're progressives, and, they're, and without the non-APAC Jews, people like Democrats like this guy would probably have a, hard, a much harder time getting funding, and this guy too. I mean, the fact is that's always been true about Jews. And what Adelson, and APAC want you to think is that the Jews are becoming Republicans. Well, wait till the next election. They voted for Barack Obama 78%. The only group that outdid Jews in voting for Barack Obama were African Americans. So it's really important. It hurt, it pains me a little to have anyone think that you know you have your next door neighbor who's Jewish and seems like a liberal and progressive guy, and then you think, but is he really one of these flag-waving Netanyahu people? He's probably not, because that is a small minority, but the few thousand of them that do exist, and it only takes a few thousand, are incredibly rich. <laughs> so your neighbor, your, the person next door in Arlington or Silver Spring, that's not, it's the people, you know, it's people who live in Manhattan and the Hamptons and Beverly Hills and all these people who are just loaded and have made Israel their ticket to power. They love, I worked for, they love making members of Congress grovel to them. Is it about Israel? Small part, mostly it's about making members of Congress grovel to them. And they also, and they also put in plugs for their businesses while they're there. They, so don't, it's really not as, I mean the Jewish community is turning, it's changing, this Iran thing, and particularly the appearance of Netanyahu at the, was at the, in, the, in the hallowed heirloom of the House of Representatives was deeply embarrassing to almost every Jew I know. We were cringing. You think you were cringing? We were cringing. So I mean, it's not, it's, uh, we have to do something about this lobby. And no one should ever allow a, an unrepresentative lobby to speak for them. And the Jewish community does not do what they should do, which is to say, you don't speak for us. Because by, not, by, not, by being silent, they allow this impression to be there. Well, thank you very much. I'm afraid that's all the time we have. We're supposed to have a break, but we're running behind. So I'm not sure if we're going to have a break or the next panel. So thank you very much. OK, Dale. <laughs>